What's going on guys, Wes back with another review. This time we're gonna go over the Watch OS 7 updates that are coming our way later this year, specifically those that have to do with fitness. So let's get to it. All right, so we got about five updates coming our way that have to deal with fitness for the Watch OS 7. Some kind of related, some small, and then one big one that I'm gonna talk about the most. All right, so the first four we're actually gonna go through pretty quickly. The watch faces, kind of related to fitness, only in the fact that they specifically showed one that made like a surf watch, which was pretty awesome. So it's gonna be exciting to see someone like perhaps Strava create their own watch face with their different apps that's gonna be just specific to like a triathlete or a runner or a cyclist. Uh, one thing I would like to see is maybe my macro tracking right on top of the watch that so I can see how much I'm gonna eat that day from my fitness pal. So up next is cycling in maps. They showed a pretty cool feature where it showed that you would perhaps have to get off your bike and walk up some stairs on a route. There's some places like that around here in South Beach, especially if you're coming over the MacArthur Causeway. If you come over the causeway, there's actually a set of stairs that's gonna take you down or you can ride over on the shoulder until it turns into a bike lane. That would be something I'd wanna see in maps. Otherwise, I just use Google Maps or literally get lost when I'm riding a bike and it just makes me go farther. So we'll see. I mean, Apple Maps isn't my go-to now. I use Google and Waze depending on which city I'm in, just because one seems to work better than the other sometimes, but interesting. The next one's the four new fitness categories that they touched on. I think this was the most underrated update of the entire thing because if you haven't seen my other video covering the Apple Watch, I go pretty in depth as far as how different met values, which are metabolic equivalencies, are determined in the different algorithms that I could find that the Apple Watch uses. Now, for them to go in and create functional strength training, which a lot of people, especially those who do CrossFit, have been wanting for the longest time, uh, dancing, core training, and then the cool down, which is really important too, because a lot of people just keep their current workout selection for the entirety of the cool down and you get thrown off by the caloric expenditure that the Apple Watch is trying to calculate. Again, if you don't understand what I'm saying, perhaps you wanna click here or down in the description to go check out my other video that goes more in depth into that feature. When you look at the compendium of physical activities where a lot of the met values are taken from and built upon, functional strength training, warm up and all that stuff isn't in there. So my assumption is that Apple must have done a lot of R&D on their end to figure out what the proper calculations would be for the user. So kudos to Apple. All right, now the last update, the big update, the one I'm gonna spend most of the time on in this video, the sleep tracking. Now in my other video that I just touched on about the Apple Watch, that was a big issue that I really wanted some sleep tracking, but that couldn't be achieved unless they improved the battery or at least some sort of way to charge the battery. Like for example, the very ingenious way that Whoop has the clip over the top that users can use and it just, charges while the user still has it. Apple can do that. I mean, right now the charging is underneath against the risk and it would block sensors, but there's gotta be some way to put the receiving, I don't know, whatever it's called, on the side for something that could slide over and charge, especially while you're sleeping. Now, before I get into it, I did see a Reddit user post, and I apologize, I cannot find it, that was a great idea. It's just, you know, if you could put your Apple Watch charger perhaps in your vehicle and charge on the way to work, or in between when you're coming home, anytime you're commuting, before bed, while you're in the shower. That way you're constantly keeping a charge, but perhaps not a full charge. Because according to Apple, it takes about one to two hours to go from zero to 100%. So that's a problem. If you resolve all that and you get into the sleep tracking, it's pretty exciting to see what exactly Apple can do with the existing architecture that they have and the knowledge of the software, how it interacts, to perhaps give the most accurate and I, found, and I found four interesting patents related to sleep that Apple owns or has been assigned that we'll go over right now that without a doubt has either been revealed or could come from the Apple sleep tracking. Number one is the system for determining the quality of sleep. A lot of different people use this. For example, Whoop give, can give you the HRV the next day to say how you recovered. 
So I, I just want to read this specifically what Apple says is the innovative concept because when you file a patent you have to disclose what is this over the prior art which is existing products or inventions that you're trying to achieve or have achieved. So for the system of determining the quality of sleep, Apple says the inventive concept here is that it states none of the other current sleep trackers determine the quality of sleep by analyzing the body posture and accur accurately distinguishing static body posture from minor body movements. So when you go in depth into it, perhaps there's your dog in your bed or a significant other that is indistinguishable from you. Your watch may get different movements. Maybe you're just scratching yourself. Maybe you're not really actually awake. And you'll show when you look at different, like I've used, I've used Fitbit and different ones, that it'll show that you were awake when perhaps you weren't. So you're getting an inaccurate uh, measurement of your sleep. One they didn't discuss, but is related to sleep that Apple has a patent on, is a vital signs monitoring system. Now in this one, what I think is really interesting is that it's taking different measurements from the from the user. Now not specifically a watch is disclosed in their patent. It actually shows this odd like kind of matte system, but it does mention a portable system in there, which could be a watch. And in that it kind of interacts like it'll take different temperatures, uh, different readings, different quality measurements and determine what in the environment perhaps need to change. From, so from what I gathered from this is perhaps, you know, if you have a smart home setup, you have like a Nest thermostat or something, you know, maybe it's measuring your body temperature and it realizes, hey, user's kind of hot, just the temperature. Maybe you need sound or maybe you need light or whatever. So it was something very interesting to see that Apple had filed a patent on and that it could be related to this sort of sleep tracking and sleep monitoring that they seem to be going. The next one's a confirming sleep based on secondary indicia of activity. It's again, getting more accurate about whether or not you are actually sleeping or you're awake. A lot of different sleep tracking systems can get this wrong. They're very simplified. They'll just think that you're asleep or you have to actually indicate that on the device. Apple wants to be able to auto detect and really be the most accurate sleep tracking system just as they are currently the most accurate calorie tracking. And the way they achieve that is that they're just state-of-the-art hardware that they have on the Apple Watch. Lastly, the patent that I found and they actually discuss is this ritual system. It's facilitating sleep reminders and determining one's sleep ritual related to their quality of sleep. So a lot of these patents are going to be in conjunction with one another. So you know, I'm not someone that generally has like a specific ritual, but perhaps it could give me better readings on I read the night before, or I watched TV, or my phone use was too late, and a different number of these factors. Now, people watching this who are knowledgeable about the whoop strap, there is a journal system that they have, which is after the fact, when you wake up the next day. Apple seems to be going a step further to send you alerts, whether on your phone or anything, and kind of take those like journal kind of entries, but put them before, if that makes sense. They're, they're trying to influence the good behavior, whereas something like the Whoop Journal just kind of makes you aware of what's working and what's not. It's Apple, they're trying to control you, and they're trying to tell you to go to bed. So that's it, that's everything that I've seen so far. I was gonna download the beta and do more of a testing, but from everything I've seen, it's been, it's very simplistic. All you're getting right now is that you're asleep and you're getting heart rate and some HRV readings, which is very exciting to get, finally get as well. So it's gonna be pretty interesting to see what comes about coming up. Um, when the public beta comes out, I'll probably definitely download it. All right, so that wraps it up. Those are the exciting fitness-related aspects of the updates coming this year in watchOS 7. Be exciting to kind of follow this, see what other patents maybe I can dig up, or any indications that may be coming about. But other than that, if you happen to like this, please literally like it down below. Uh, the biggest way you can support me to keep doing these videos is subscribe, fun hobby of mine, and I just appreciate your time watching. So go do something awesome.